me a pepper right up. Baby boy, black man, you're enjoying that day. Y'all pay attention to me. Don't make me have to run my voice while y'all trying to talk while I'm talking. You take the chair, Daddy. I like that. You're having a good time today, babies. See all the wonderful Confederate soldiers. You're having a good time with the Christian Cross of St. Andrew today. Let me tell you something. By the time this baby boy here gets ready to go into high school, he goes strutting into one of these classrooms or schoolhouses with the Christian Cross of St. Andrew on his person. You know what they're gonna tell him? Come here, boy. You take that shirt on that you got on, you turn it inside out, or you go home. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin is gonna say why. And they're gonna tell Kevin because that flag that you got on that shirt is a flag of slavery. They're gonna go on to tell him that the NAACP, the oldest civil rights organization in the country, and a resolution in the mid 80s said that this flag, the Confederate battle flag, because this is the Naval Jack, is an evil, demonic, odious blight on the universe and need to be getting rid of. Now, what do you think Kevin's going to feel like when he goes strutting in the classroom, the schoolhouse that day, and they tell him to take this off? He's going to remember this day. He gonna remember, y'all take that conversation over a little bit further, man. Excuse me, man, y'all move y'all conversation over. I can't think. Y'all making all that noise behind me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like these stripes, y'all. <laughs> Kevin won't understand that. Here I was. Don't you came me, Kevin. The president of the NAACP at a national convention. These folks were sitting around, first of all, when I looked up and saw all these white men up there, I thought to myself, my God, I thought this was a black run organization. <laughs> and all the black folks were standing around, wringing their hands. So what are we going to do? We're getting ready to go broke. We don't have any money. And one of my northern white folk friends got up and said, hey, wait a minute. We got plenty of money around here. But we need for you to do something for us. We're tired of sending our babies down south just places like old Miss listening to that band playing Dixie. I wish I was in the land of cotton, old time there, and not forgotten. We're tired of sending our corporate workers down south looking at that rebel flag. Now, as southern white men, I mean, as northern white men, we can't go down south and attack that flag. All you have to do is just go down south and say slavery. And those black folks down there don't know anything about the war between the states. And they certainly don't know anything about themselves. They'll get right in line. So, baby girl, get your pretty self here and let me hug you some because I'm going to ride a gas. <laughs> I got my gas back now. I feel much better. Thank you, baby. I'm ready now. <laughs> so, they went in this room and came back with this resolution that said that the Christian cross of St. Andrew was an evil, odious, blight on the universe, and that black folks had no. In, no, no, no dealings in this inception. And that it need to be getting rid of. I can't tell you, baby girl, I don't have much hair on my head, but it stood straight up. My mama was the only black woman to ever receive a Confederate state film. Can I get an amen? Amen. Tell you, I'm proud of that. She was still alive at the time. And you, know, you know, I don't know how my mama knew about this resolution before I got home. And you, just like it was when I was a baby boy, baby boy. You go home and you do something bad up the street. And when you get home, mama be standing at the door with the switch. And we didn't have a telephone. I'm thinking, myself, how did my mama know that? <laughs> but she knew. Yeah. And she told me, boy, if you want to remain president of the NAACP, you take that resolution and throw it in the trash can. Because that's a Christian symbol. And she reminded me. 69 AD, in a place called Preosa, Greece, there he was, the first apostle of Jesus Christ, Andrew, round there praying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, he said. And all Russian persecutor come up to him and say, boy, come here. We ain't going to have that round here. 
We ain't gonna have you around here preaching about your master Jesus Christ. You keep that preaching up, we're gonna nail you to the cross like we did Jesus. And Andrew said, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be nailed to the cross like Jesus, but I'm gonna keep praying. So if you gotta put me up on that cross, just put me up there in the form of a neck, just tie me up. We tie him up. For three days, that old man kept preaching. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said. Yeah. I shall fear no evil. God with me. And after three days, Andrew, as he got people and he could battle him, all those folks gathered around and said, take that old man down. So he took that old persecutor, took Andrew down. And Andrew fell on the ground and died. Many years later, the so-called Christian emperor, Constantine, dug up Andrew's bones and sent him back to his native land of Scotland. That X, while this is not the Scottish flag, it's a derivation of it. In battle, when the war between the states started, in the very first battle, the stars and bars was flying, looked just like the stars and stripes. They call us the stars and bars, baby, but it's not. <coughs> the stars and bars looked like the stars and stripes. So the men couldn't determine who was the federal soldiers and who were the Confederate soldiers. So they decided they had needed to have another flag. And when Porter Miles and the men chose this flag, they knew it was a Christian symbol, that it was Andrew's flag. So when the NAACP called my Christian symbol evil and odious blight on the universe, I knew it was time for me to go. And when I got home, my mama told me, boy, put that resolution in the trash can where it belonged, and that's where it was. I think it's still around there. They will tell you, babies, that black folks had no part <clears throat> with this plan. Train cadre of black folks on plantations all across the Southland of America. I mean, all the implements of war, all the cannons that you see, the uniforms that these men have on, the bullets, the gunpowder, Right along beside your grandpas and grandmas, black folks went off to war with a man that he not only called master, but a man he called family and friend. Earned a place of honor and dignity. That flag is as much of any black man in the South who wanted to pick it up as any white man. Because he earned that place of honor and dignity. Most of you babies go to the public school system and in February, you have so-called Black History Month. I don't call it Black History Month anymore, baby boy. I call it beat up on the white folks in the South Month. That's <laughs> what it is. All you see is black folks being hung, boat hunters out with the dogs, spraying folks. That was all about states' rights, baby. And well, of course, boat hunters hated black folks. But boat hunters and George Wallace, that must have been a... How, many, how much time I got? Three minutes. Thank you, sir. Keep reminding me. Y'all know y'all say I run my mouth too much around here. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Baby girl. Black folks hated this flag, you know. I got to brag a little bit. Back in 2002, walking 20 miles a day, six days a week, dressed and donned in the uniform of the Southern soldier. I carried that flag 1,600 miles from Asheville, North Carolina, to Austin, Texas. If black folks hated this flag as much as folks say they did, I'd have a Chinese name now. He hung high. <laughs> <laughs> you must understand, if Abraham Lincoln truly cared about the slaves, truly cared about our freedom, he would have never agreed and walked around with that thing called a Corrin Amendment in his hands. Don't your babies ever forget the Corrin Amendment? The Corrin Amendment. Are you tired of me already, baby boy? You better go to your mama. You just realized that you were a handsome man. You read my mind. You read my mind when I said I'm looking better than you. Go back to your mama. <laughs> just finally realized that I was with that old handsome man. Give me a hug. I love you, boy. You must be around here eyeballing my women. That's why you're mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Baby boy. Oh, boom. <laughs> Don't you ever. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, come here. Come here. Listen, my babies. This is the most important thing I can tell you. I've run my mouth a lot around here. Please listen to me, baby boy. Come here. Come here. Bring your handsome self. I don't want you babies to ever forget this. That man that they sent around here and told me was my great emancipator, Abraham Lincoln. Probably was the biggest bigot of his time. He told Douglas when he went into his office, perhaps you black folks always been equal to the white man around here in this country. But as long as you have the color skin you have, you'll never be equal. You need to get out. Liberation is, colonization is the only key for you. You need to go. Here's a man, Abraham Lincoln. While President Buchanan is the one who signed, don't forget this, the Corin Amendment, C-O-R-W-I-N. Don't ever forget it. And in that Corin Amendment it said, that if the men of the South would agree to the tax increases on the table being proposed by Lincoln and his henchmen, that Congress would never have the ability to write an amendment to end the economic institution of slavery. This is the man they gave to me.